So my name is Andy Jackson and I'm here to share with you a real life installation uh, with Utmost Life and Pensions. They're a UK based company so they currently have around 330,000 active customers and really just wanted to share with you how we've implemented a successful adaptive case management uh, process or processes with them and some of the benefits that's actually realised for their company. So in terms of Utmost Life and Pensions, they're a traditional life and pensions company providing life and pension services. Their inbound call centre in terms of customer services was structured um, very much in terms of uh, your traditional businesses where you've got a call centre where calls would come into the, into the call centre, they would also receive emails, letters in the post that would be scanned and, and captured into their system, as well as a number of web forms. And what they found over time is through mergers and acquisitions, they've actually taken uh, new books of business into their systems and they've ended up with, with basically replication of IT systems, customer services teams, IT teams. And they came to Paris to talk to us around how we could help alleviate some of those problems. As I say, they've got a number of teams within their organisation. So we'd got P2 who would work on the phones, Pat in the post room. And each of those customer services teams actually supported different product areas. Each request that came in from a customer would typically trigger an outgoing communication. So it may be that they can answer that customer request over the phone. It may be that a document gets produced, so a customer requests an illustration, an annual statement. Those documents would be produced through the, the traditional document composition stage, go back to the customer, and that closed cycle or closed loop process continues. So that would traditionally then trigger another communication into the call center, and that process continues. What we also found when we were talking with Utmost is that through all of their different IT systems, they had a number of different reports and, and uh, information that came from those systems. And it was a full-time role for somebody to actually take that information, consolidate it into reports, share that with the management to review, and then see how the teams were performing. So one of the really important uh, elements of the project was also to deliver that management information and reporting. If we look at how customer services were actually processing those requests coming in, they needed access to a host of information. So the data around that customer, the policies they have, uh, all the previous information that, that they hold on that customer, because that can ultimately help in terms of the servicing for that customer. Knowing what that customer's asked for before, what information has been shared with them, they needed access to all that information. Behind the scenes in terms of customer service, obviously customer facing and shielding those queries that come through are a number of teams. So you've got the admin teams, the support teams um, that are helping support all that. And again, those were duplicated across the business. And ultimately somewhere sat down in the basement, you've got the IT developers who keep the system running, the databases, uh, the legacy code is all there and running. And that process in terms of that structure was replicated, like I say, so every product they had, they had basically carbon copies of this setup. So it just led to inefficiencies and duplication in terms of the, the organization of their business. So how does adaptive case management now come into that era? Who is defining that? How did they do that? So in terms of the actual project itself, um, it was split into a number of phases. So the first real delivery in terms of the project was the migration. Upmost had a number of IT systems where they were keeping their historic customer information. And the first phase was really to go in and do the analysis in terms of what information we needed to migrate from those systems. And for that, we used the adaptive case management process. So we took over 24 million folders, and that consisted or contained 21 million images. So imagine all those documents, all the content, everything that was, was related to those customers and policy holders had to be brought into the Paris object system. We also had to bring over all of the customer notes. So these are the queries that come in. If a customer had called us kind of 10 years ago, we need to have access to that data. And that was really important to make sure that the 500,000 plus uh, customer interactions were brought into the system so they had access to that historic information. It's an enormous amount of, of, uh, of Huge volumes. amount of data. Yes, really. Incredible. I think the other element in there is that the light still had to stay on, so each day that we were bringing the data into the systems, we had to make sure that we were capturing that delta in terms of what the system had, what had been processed that day, to make sure that was also migrated into the new system. We also had to replicate the business processes. 
They know their business, we don't. So we need to go in, capture their processes, work with them in terms of their knowledge experts. They've got the business analysts, they know their systems. And we need to replicate those processes within our, our case management. We also need to replicate their organisational structure. So the ways that they worked in terms of the teams, the routing of those jobs, that also needs to be replicated within the, within the adaptive case management process. So it was also using the business designers already by employees of utmost yeah absolutely okay and i'll show you some of those screens in terms right. of how they how they design yep. those processes mm -hmm. in some of the later screens the other key element as i said was around the reporting so the ability to automate their reporting so they didn't want to have manual processes with spreadsheets and, and pdfs being generated so we use the, the reporting framework to help automate that. So the, the managers get an email every morning with a PDF or a, a spreadsheet attached so they can use that for their, their morning meetings to review how their, their team's performing. And the final step really was around that maintenance. So we actually wanted to empower Utmost so their customer services team could actually manage those processes. We didn't want them to have to pick up the phone and book a consultant and wait for us to go and change those processes. We wanted them to be self-sufficient so they could update their processes. So when they had regulatory changes, when they had change of terms and conditions, whatever it may be, we wanted to empower them so that they could actually go and maintain the system themselves. In terms of how adaptive case management works and how it was set up for utmost we've got a concept of really a, a main case and that main case is really what stores the customer information so that's the policy information that relates to that particular customer each interaction that that, that customer has with utmost is handled then in a subcase so that incoming call the the notes the comments whatever the request is that's captured within that subcase and linked back into that main case the important information uh, within there as well is that they also use Papyrus DocExec in terms of the document composition. So all of their annual statements, their customer letters are also needed to be linked into this main case so that customer services team had got visibility of all of those documents and interactions. In terms of what a case or a subcase is, really it's a, a container. So this contains the business process, it's the data, it's the goals, the, the processes that they need to, to fulfill to service that customer. It contains the data, so notes, comments, a document that's gone out to that customer is also stored within that case. It links all those interactions together and ultimately we've got those interaction points. So when a, an annual statement, for example, is produced and that's available on the portal. The customer also gets a notification, so there's a new document for them. They can log in and see that, that document. So it's really that full kind of end-to-end -end integration for them. They use the adaptive case management for their long-term storage. So one of the, the real benefits of using the Papyrus system is that it took them on a journey in terms of modernizing their IT infrastructure. It's all based on, on Windows technology, in terms of the Paris installation and we use distributed depots to actually store the long-term archive of those documents so those are then available to the customer services team in the future. And the final part in terms of why we use the, the adaptive case management is in terms of the straight through process. So any of the queries that came into the call center would be logged in the in the system, they'd be routed through to the right teams, the teams would then update the system a document may be produced and ultimately that end-to-end -end process doesn't need a piece of paper to be printed and put in a in an internal post or mail book that goes to another department to service. It's all handled within that adaptive case management process. In terms of who was involved in the project, in terms of the teams, the resources, the first step in terms of that migration was handled with the Papyrus consultants. So we were talking to their business experts and the IT teams. We need to know how the databases worked, what information we need to retrieve. And we replicated those processes, like I say, within the adaptive case management. How many of these consultants did we need? So initially there was a project team with uh, two consultants from Papyrus. And of course, we, we use the skills within Papyrus in terms of calling some of our experts in terms of the single sign-on, the database, when we needed them in, in the specific parts of the project. From a, a customer side, in terms of, if I just flick back to that slide, the business experts, really they were kind of very small teams. So one project manager, one business analyst, a test manager. So we're talking about very small teams but if you think in terms of the volume of data we, tra we transferred and migrated, 
I mean, most IT projects, they would be impact, huge. Yes, You'd have yes. multiple projects. Right. And most of those migrations would probably not be projects. They would be programs because of the scale and size of them where you're talking 50 plus developers. So very small uh, team that work very closely and collaboratively together. In terms of the replication, again, that was very much the, the price consultant would work with the project manager to actually take their business processes and start to map those within the business designer. And I'll show you how we, we did that. So in terms of the actual business tools that, that they used, we provided Upmost with the business designer. And this is really where their, their business knowledge experts can access the system. They can come in and as you can see at the top, we've got a number of different processes that basically can be executed by the business users. And we've got the processes that are mapped out underneath. This is one of the processes. And as you can see at the top, we've got kind of the full end-to-end -end process, which in terms of customer registration for the website is quite a long and detailed process with two-factor authentication, validation of email addresses, integration with their line of business systems to make sure the customer hasn't already registered. And that's mapped out in the, the lower screen, kind of just selected in that, that red box from the top, just to show the interaction. So each one of those boxes represents a form that the user's filling in. It's a process where we're going and getting some data. It's a decision point to make sure the customer hasn't registered, for example. And we worked with, with the utmost business to make sure that, that they understood how to use this tool and it reflected their business processes. We used the... Uh, the business designer to also replicate their organizational structure. So how those customer services teams are structured, who the, the workers are. So if Pete is working on the phones and he, he supports a particular product, we would need a way of replicating that within the, the system to make sure that the cases were routed through to the correct teams. And like I say, we, we basically replicated their organiz organizational structure within the, the ACM process. In terms of reporting, this was basically managed by their, their admin team. So their admin teams, again, are responsible within the business um, designer to actually define the tables, the source of, of the data they want, what information they want to come through in the reports and how they want that reported. So ultimately that lands on an inbox for the, the management team and they get that, like I say, every morning so they can sit in their meetings, they can review all of the cases that are going through. So every customer query interaction is a case. They can see those cases, they can see the SLAs, and they can make any changes. Do they need to bring a couple of more people into the team to actually help support and close some of those, those open uh, activities so that they can meet their SLAs because they're, they're regulated by, by various processes internally? The final step, like I say, was really in terms of that maintenance. So one of the the real benefits in terms of using the, the business designer is to empower the business users, so giving them the ability that, that they can self-service and, and maintain the documents themselves, the templates, um, and all of the, the kind of processes, forms, data that we've seen in terms of the, the business designer. And to do that, that was really done with kind of a, a training session, so a week of going in, showing the project manager, showing the, the customer services team, how they can maintain the documents, working with them, or not documents, sorry, processes, um, in terms of going through and showing them how to use the system, how to log in, how they change things. Um, and ultimately what we found now is, after doing that training, probably 12 months ago, they're actually now in a process where their customer service team are now training their own colleagues and, and teams. So actually our training, they're able to take in-house and extend that within their teams to, to really share that knowledge and and skill set within their teams. That's integrated with the release management. So again, their systems in terms of being able to update their processes, it's part of the release management process. So again, there's a, an adaptive case management process that sits behind this. So very simple in terms of utmost setup that they create a new version of a particular process that goes through a testing cycle and then that gets promoted into production. There's no kind of big kind of external system that's kind of managing all of that process, no change requests that are being fired off and, and reviewed in meetings. They do all of that through the, the business designer. They can literally make a change now, test it, make sure they're happy with it, click on the activate button, and it's in production. So for them, there's some real benefits in terms of being able to use these terms for self-service. I think one of the, or a number of the 
the benefits of using the adaptive case management in terms of, of this particular installation for Upmost were really around the, the timescales. So that huge amount of data that we had to pick up, transfer into the Papara system, complete all of the user training, do all the testing, that was all completed within six months. I think if you look at major projects to, to migrate legacy data and those systems, those projects would take six months really just for a business team or architect to, to just start to think about migrating that data. And we'd completed all of that within six months from start to end. One of the real benefits in terms of, of how we migrated and the way that we took that data and, and we looked at the, the differences and the del delta points and migrating that over into the Pyro system is that we didn't have any, any customer outages. So it was really important for Upmost that they kept the lights on. They still needed to continue to maintain and service their customers. So at no point during the system did they have any outages where they couldn't answer the phone or handle those customer requests. So I think that's a really key benefit for the, the project. It's all integrated in one system, so I almost see this very much as a strategic platform. So we're talking to them at the moment in terms of migrating other products that they've got into the Papara system. We've already started to talk in terms of expanding, so the ability to message customers directly with uh, marketing messages, for example, is in the pipeline. And it, it's very much um, that conversation with them to make sure that we're, we're growing and enhancing the offering that we have with them. There were operational benefits, so in terms of their previous structure, they'd got different customer service teams in different areas of the building, and through the use of adaptive case management and the routing, they've been able to pull that together, so that team now sits together, they're able to cross-skill and cross-train on the different products that they weren't able to do, so huge operational efficiencies within their organisation. We've provided them with that digital workplace, so their, their 30 plus customer services team members are able to log in. They're able to look at the reporting, they're able to look at the cases, they're able to change the processes just with that, that one login. They don't need to access multiple IT systems. Of course, with progressive, well, with advancements in terms of um, being able to self-service and access documents online through online portals, etc., they've also been able to reduce that paper. So one of the recent projects we've also implemented off the back of the adaptive case management process is the online and customer self-service, which Denny showed some of the information on yesterday. And that's really allowed them to reduce printing around 20,000 documents each year um, that would be printed, put in envelopes, posted out in, in vehicles. So again, huge environmental and cost benefits in terms of the, the project. And I think the other piece is they see this really as an enabler of change. So like I said, we're already talking to them about future enhancements, what they can do with the system, and just how we can continue to work together to deliver more successful projects. Are there yeah. new, new specific demands to extend the system with, or is it more or less to uh, onboard a few more uh, uh, employees or, or organizational units? I think it's both of those really. So the ability for them to bring in new books of, of customers into the system. So in terms of they've got that confidence that we can take that, that huge amount of data, bring it in there with no issues, no GDPR issues, bring that data in, but also within their teams that they know that when they onboard new members of staff, they don't need to go through months and months of training. They can use the system and it's all intuitive for their, for their users. I think kind of the, the final element in terms of just one of the messages that I wanted to share with you, this came from the, the CEO of Upmost, and really they saw this project as their crown and glory. So going live with the image and workflow setup in terms of implementing the adaptive case management as really that, that foundational platform, expanding in terms of that online customer service, and then the continued work that we've got with Upmost, I think for them it was a huge success in terms of their organisation. 